what can magic not do? Okay, we spent a lot of time talking on this channel or on at, on the full courses at magic.me or the podcast or things like that. Obviously, we spent a lot of time talking about magic, hyping magic up, telling people why it's so awesome, you know, encouraging people to get into it, things like that. But what, where, where are the limitations? This is something you basically never see anyone talking about. And uh, I feel like I'm, I'm pretty confident I can answer this question now. I spent basically a quarter of a century just nonstop involved in this material and teaching it and learning it and going all over the world. Um, so I think this is actually really important to, to answer because um, this topic, as you might imagine, unlike so many other topics, leads people to go get to, to go out there. Okay. It, it, it just encourages people to just go hog wild imagining stuff. Um, and, and it's, that's not a surprise. I mean, it's called magic for God's sake. Um, and so it's really easy for people to just literally imagine, you know, stuff from Hollywood, stuff from books, um, you know, kitschy stuff. Or on the other hand, and I sometimes get people writing in with things like this, thinking that it can make all their dreams come wildly true. Uh, and it can make them rich and f famous and sexy and successful and all this stuff. And, and you know what? It, it probably can actually, but the question is, can it do all of it? You know, it's like, like, let's just be realistic. Let's set expectations here. Right. Um, what does that really mean? What would something like that take? Right. So to begin with, let's, let's just start with what magic is. Okay. So let's be real academic and precise about this and no bullshit, no layering stuff on, no hyping it up. What is it literally academically? Okay. Magic with a K is a word that has been used for a set of spiritual techniques in Western civilization since the Renaissance. Um, and it, is, it has been a blanket term for largely a kind of set of, I would say like edge practices, or I don't want to say fringe practices, but, but kind of like off the beaten track practices that were kind of set by the wayside of mainstream Christianity Judaism and in some cases Islam. So they were kind of like the, the, the too hot for TV techniques in a sense. Um, and generally, specifically speaking, that means Kabbalah. Okay. Which comes originally from Judaism. It comes from the 12th century, specifically the Lurianic tradition is what ended up in Western magic. Um, but it was not, you know, and you'll find if you talk to Jewish people, you'll find it's not exactly Jewish Kabbalah. It's kind of Christian Kabbalah. It was a Christianized version of it. Um, it was taken out of context. It was combined with other things. So it's a kind of like hacked version of it. Um, but largely Kabbalah, but also things like tarot, uh, things like astrology, things like geomancy, things like um, uh, operative magic as Cornelius Agrippa called it, which is talking to spirits, right? Uh, angels, demons, or nature spirits, or uh, astrological spirits, often what happened, planetary spirits. So outside of Kabbalah, there's a lot of practices that are kind of parallel to Kabbalah and ultimately ended up getting kind of synthesized with it. So that includes things like tarot, astrology, gematria, um, uh, astral, you know, astrology, geomancy, and as Cornelius Agrippa called it, or operative magic, which is, uh, you know, at least in the Renaissance period, was the art of talking to spirits, whatever that actually means. Uh, and that angels, demons, nature spirits, planetary spirits, astrological spirits, or, or essentially the idea, as we would look at it as modern people, of uh, the, the natural world can be personified, that you can, like an animistic view of, of nature, that you can talk to different parts of it as if they were intelligent. Okay. Um, there's, and, and a lot more, right? It's a pretty broad set of practices. So the best writer or the person who really brought this all together in the Renaissance is, as I mentioned, a guy named Cornelius Agrippa, who wrote a book called Three Books of Occult Philosophy, where he kind of went all over Europe and gathered all of the uh, high magic, the Kabbalistic magic, which was generally for the upper classes, particularly in the cities, the Medici city states, taken from people like uh, Pico uh, Double Mirandola and, and other people like that. And also the folk magic of Europe, which was more for common people. Uh, and he put them all together into this, this book, which was a huge hit for the time. Um, there were a lot of developments after that. There was John Dee's Enochian system. There was the uh, Alphase Levy, who 
synthesize the stuff even more, put Kabbalah and the tarot together for the first time. There was the Golden Dawn, which merged the stuff and put it all into a Masonic structure so it could be taught in degrees. There was Crowley, who brought in techniques from um, uh, more Eastern cultures like yoga, meditation, and Tantra, uh, and all the way up to the modern day with things like chaos magic, which is kind of like the postmodern deconstruction of the whole thing, and, and, and on and on. So when we talk about magic, that's pretty much what we're talking about. You know, esotericism as it was expressed in Europe in the second millennia up to the present. That's its historical meaning. And I've written a lot more about this in my John D. book. There are certain even political ramifications of it if you really dig into it. But by and large, it was a hidden technique, often for nobility, often for the upper classes in the case of high magic not folk magic. Everyone kind of basically had access to folk magic, uh, same as it is all over the world now. Uh, but high magic specifically was a technique that was set aside for the nobility. That really changed at the end of the 19th century and the 20th century, um, first with the Golden Dawn, but also with people like Crowley and a secretary, Israel Rigardi, which basically leaked the material. I mean, they you know, they were students of it, but they pretty much um, they pretty much leaked that they broke their oaths and leaked the material and put the system out into the public. So most of what you see today, uh, almost all of it, actually, if you look at, if you go to the New Age section of the bookstore and you, you get books on magic, uh, it's from the Golden Dawn. It's, you know, almost every Llewellyn or Wiser book or, um, you know, anything that relates to specifically magic is, you know, an elaboration on something that came out of the Golden Dawn. And the Golden Dawn, if you want to study all the stuff in one place, the Golden Dawn is, is where to do it. Even Crowley really just elaborated on the Golden Dawn tradition. He kind of put his own personality on it. He brought in more techniques. He advanced it. People like Dion Fortune, Golden Dawn system. Okay, it's all, all pretty much the Golden Dawn. So technically speaking, when you get books on magic, you're, you're usually getting books on the Golden Dawn. And, and I will say, and I've been criticized for making the statement before, is even by people like Peter Carroll, um, you know, chaos magic itself is largely in the, kind of the same thing. It's more or less a reaction to the Golden Dawn system. It's still within that stream, right? It's still within the the, the general dialogue, if you will, with, uh, with the system. So um, that's what magic really is. Now, obviously, there's there's been a lot of development on that. After the creation of the internet, people have gotten really into digging up old books, old material, going back and doing better academic research on the subject than the Golden Dawn did, which is great. Um, but also because we now live in a global society, people have gotten the chance to explore techniques from all over the world. So now, unlike in Victorian England, we have real lived experience of other traditions. Either we can go to those places and interact with people, or in a lot of cases, their teachers have come to the West, particularly with like Tibetan Buddhism, Hinduism, Tantra, things like this. Um, you know, there's been a massive, just massive cross-cultural sharing of information, particularly in the U.S., also in England, but particularly in the United States, which I really believe is one of the, the best places to find information about this. People in America are really generally spiritually open. Teachers are here because they can make money here. There's, there's a lot, a lot you can learn just by going out and meeting people now, which was not as much the case before. If you look at the Golden Dawn, pretty much what they were doing is getting stuff out of the British library and imagining like what it must have been like in ancient Egypt or with John D and just kind of like embellishing it with their imagination. And they did a really good job. But now we have, um, you know, direct access. Another example is Theosophy, you know, Blavatsky, they had all these bizarre ideas about Tibetan ascended Tibetan masters and, you know, these, what we would now consider kind of racist ideas about, about people from Asia and now, but they wrote these like Marvel comics, Dr. Strange books about ascended masters coming down from the Himalayas and things like that. Uh, and it's not necessarily that's not real. It's just that now you can actually go meet those people. Okay. Like you can actually go 
talk to Tibetan Buddhist teachers instead of like your telepathic contacts, things like this. So, um, which means we live in a really, really, really awesome time. In fact, I think that this is the golden age of magic just because we've never in human history had the internet. We've never had the ability to get so much information and talk to so many people uh, because of global culture. It's a really, really exciting time. And that means a couple of things. One, one, it means we get lots more information. We get to study other traditions. We get to compare notes with other traditions, um, perhaps evolve and create new transit, new, new traditions that are syntheses, syntheses of, of new material. Um, which is certainly something that I've done in my life. And I presented a lot of that stuff at magic.me. Um, but also we get to find out what was not, tr not actually true in the past. And the more experience you get of magic, the more um, straightforward it looks, the more natural it looks, the more common sense it looks, and the less Hollywood it looks. Um, and for instance, with things like Tibetan meditation, or like actually going on meditation retreats, and like actually getting experience of magic, and then you, you kind of go back to the old books and you see all the cartoony language, and you see you say like, oh, okay, I, I understand now what states of consciousness they were talking about instead of thinking, well, I'm actually going to fly or something like that. So, um, so that's really important to do as well. And that's definitely something that I've tried to do in my work, which is bring out what's real, you know, what's practical, what's, you know, we even have lots of scientific research now, neurological research, psychological research on things like, um, brain change due to meditation, even change in the physical structure of the brain. There's thousands and thousands and thousands of studies on that now. Um, so we don't have to have superstition anymore. We don't have to have goofy ideas anymore. Um, it, it, you know, you don't want to totally like kill the spirit of the thing, but at the same time, I think it's really important to just be honest, straightforward and direct. And the most important reason for that is to get people to once again, take the study of human consciousness seriously um because you know you don't need to be talking you know they just look around we have the most advanced technology we've ever had we've got nuclear weapons we've got nano warfare we've got bio warfare we've got you know artificial intelligence you know like god knows what else we you know militaries have that we don't know about uh humanity has unbelievable destructive power the ability to destroy all life on earth many 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 times over um, and yet, where are we con with our consciousness? What conversations are we having? You know, it, it's, <laughs> you know, just look at the news, okay? People are still pretty effing dumb. Sorry, it's true. And it's not that people are dumb, it's that they are um, being put in a context where they're just given dumb stuff to talk about. You know, like argument culture, the culture of war. Okay, like arguments that really are meaningless, um, you know, fighting over, you know, as Bill Hicks said, you know, like, I, I think the puppet on the left has my opinions. No, I believe the puppet on the right is more to my liking. Just ridiculous political stuff that people actually have very little power over, um, but occupy their brains with anger all day long, um, particularly with social media. So uh, we have nukes, yet we're arguing over trivialities. In fact, I think you could easily make the argument that we're a lot dumber and more emotionally manipulated and at a much lower level than we were uh, 30, 40 years ago, even 20 years ago. You know, I, I think that despite having the internet now, the quality of media when I was a kid in the 80s would like even things like NPR or PBS, Cosmos with Carl Sagan, remember that? You know, it was, it was like, pretty freaking good and that's like what people were watching okay so you know rant aside so it's really important to give people techniques so that they can improve the quality of their own mind and that's basically why i teach magic okay um so all that said if magic is essentially a set of techniques what works? Okay. So the stuff that works is meditation, all these spiritual techniques to improve your thinking, to improve your focus, your discipline, to reveal your sense of purpose in life, to put you in touch with who you really are, um, to modify you in such a sense that you can move in the world so that all of the decisions and actions you're taking are bringing you closer towards your true spiritual calling in life. Right. And it's more than just like something you want to do in your life. 
Crowley called it the true will. It's more like, why do you exist at all? And we all have that already burning within ourselves. But now more than ever, we get swept up into the distraction of nonsense that's thrown at us all day, every day, me included. You know, it's, it's an ongoing struggle. So um, that's really what magic is for. And when you do that, reality opens up. Things happen that to all intents and purposes seem like magic. But the reason that they seem like magic is not necessarily supernatural. It's just that you're using, you know, you learn to, by mastering yourself through meditation, yoga, Kabbalah, esoteric techniques, whatever it is that works for you out of this big toolkit, by mastering techniques like this and therefore mastering yourself, you get to use 100% of your capacity. And when you can use 100% of your capacity, I don't even say 100% of your brain because that's been scientifically disproven now. I just want to say 100% of your capacity, which really often comes down to not a physiological thing, by the way, but um, it's more in my experience about how you structure your time and the decisions you make. And I know that sounds really mundane, but it's actually not when you take it moment to moment with really focused meditation ability. Okay. So when you get that capacity, when you can use 100% of yourself, then you start being able to do things that to all intents and purposes look to other people like magic, right? And magic in the sense of they think I can never do that. Like, I, how, how can somebody even do that? Like, you know, like I, you know, cause, because they're sitting on the couch with their phone or, or whatever. Um, if you think of what one human being can do in a lifetime, if they're focused on one goal the entire time, pretty phenomenal, right? And, and the answer to that is anybody who's ever done anything phenomenal in history, whether it's the greatest athletes, the greatest politicians, the greatest actors, actresses, writers, artists, scientists, you know, anyone that you can think of from history who has been single-pointedly, doggedly single-pointed focused on attaining one goal. And it's not just an arbitrary goal, but it's the one that they feel that they, they're here to do, right? That, that's the key to success, right? And magic is a set of techniques for, for giving you that key. So great. Sounds good. What can magic not do? All right. Let me, this is going to be fun. Let me think about this. I'm going to, I'm going to think back on all the different things people have said to me over the years or all the things I've thought in some cases that magic can do. Number one, you cannot throw fireballs. I would love, uh, don't get me wrong. I would look, if you could, I would be a hundred percent on that. I mean, like six, like, Oh, like, Oh, great. Being successful in your, your spiritual calling of life. F fuck that. Like, I want to throw fireballs out of my hand. Like, honestly, I would put a hundred percent of my focus into that. I grew up playing street fighter. That would be awesome. Um, sadly, no. Okay. Uh, supernatural abilities like flying, walking on water. All this stuff you kind of read in the old old books. Uh, look, I've been to any of India many times. They will tell you in India that people can do this stuff. Actually, I don't really doubt it. However, I think that probably you would have to spend your entire life meditating to be able to do that. And often when you've actually did it, it prob probably wouldn't be exactly what you thought it was. Um, but that said, there's a classic story people tell in India. And people tell me this many times about there's a guy meditating on the side of the Ganges for 12 years um, for the ability to walk across water. And he has his hand up in the air for 12 years. People actually do this, by the way, until their hand mortifies, all the skin comes off the bone. It's dedication. It's impressive. Um, they do it for spiritual reasons. But in, in this story, this guy's doing this just for the ability to walk across the Ganges. So he's there for 12 years. Finally, he gets the ability. He walks across the river. It's awesome. He did it. And he notices when he gets to the other side that a guy's been following him in a boat the entire time. And he says like, oh, uh, that's great. You learned to walk on water. You know, it was like, it was like 10 rupees to run a boat to get to the other, to get to the other side. You know, it's like, <laughs> right. It, you know, it's like, you know, that's really, I mean, it's, it's kind of like a, a messed up story, but it's also how you kind of have to look at it. It's like, uh, you know, if you want to fly, if it, let's say you want to get the ability to fly or something like that, you're going to fly to, Fly to India. Okay. It's like, well, you know, yeah, you could, you know, like just, just get a plane ticket. You know what I mean? It's like the world off the world now in the 21st century offers us through technology, almost every quote unquote magic power that was ever promised in the old books. 
Okay. So, so let's break it down. All right. Like, you know, we'll see, you want to summon a flying carpet, the Uber. Okay. You want to have like treasures transported to you overnight from across the world. Amazon. Okay. Uh, what, yeah. You want to fly somewhere planes. Okay. You know, Priceline.com. That's not an ad. I've never used Priceline. Um, you know, like, like, like you name it, right. You want to like look into a scrying ball and be able to telepathically communicate with somebody like in another city or on the other side of the world, you know, zoom. Okay. On your phone. Right. Uh, do you want to be telepathically in it? Last the theosophists and the Buddhists said, you know, in the future through and we, the humanity will be enlightened and we will all be telepathically connected to everyone in the world at all times. And we will realize we are all one being. It's like, well, you the internet. Okay. It's like social media. It's like, here you go. <laughs> was it quite, quite as great as you thought it was going to be? Was it? It's like, okay. They never told you about the comment section in the old books, but here, here you are. Right. So, um, I mean, I'm, I'm being uh, uh, cheeky, but also not, you know, it's like, if, you know, any of these quote unquote magic powers you want to get, they're, they're all given to you already. Um, the question is, how do you, structure and live your life in such how do you live in a magical world because we already we are in the aeon of horus right as crowley put it we are in the magical world you know we're not in the old aeon of you know just moribund suffering and christianity and all of this stuff we're in the magical world and it's not even a religion it's just the information technology we're in this giant soup of godlike powers and interconnection with with uh human beings who are all intents and purposes gods now right i mean that's what all the old books were talking about here we are right it's not some far off you know rainbow gathering you know ascension portal whatever fifth and twelfth dimension butthole chakra shit whatever people talk about right it's here and now magic is about what's right in front of your face if you've ever seen if you've ever seen one of those magic uh, those 3d magic eye paintings that's what magic is like okay it's not like something comes down uh, out of the sky it's like you know, it's just like a magic 3D eye painting where you just look at the world a little bit different and all of a sudden it all comes into place. That's what real magic is like. It's, it's what's, it's about what's happening right here, right now. So the question is, if we have all these abilities, what, you know, how do we live like that? And I would contend that the tradition of magic itself offers us these ethical, moral, moral, ethical, moral, and intellectual frameworks for living in that universe for living effectively with the magic powers we already have and structuring it. And the key question to that is, are you doing your true will? But look at all the people who have been lost in technology. You know, all the old books talk about cities, right? Which is the Eastern way of saying magic powers. And they say, don't get distracted by the cities. Focus on the goal, focus on getting to God, right? It's like, well, look at all, how many people do you know? It's like, how often are you or I throughout the course of the day, lost in the cities it's like scrolling instagram you know ordering doordash you know it's like bring me food it's like we totally take it for granted now um but we have completely lost our focus on who we know ourselves to be even our burning goal for what we wanted to do in life when we were younger right is now lost because we're just scrolling doom scrolling right i mean it's pretty on the nose example but it's 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 it is what it is. So, um, so, so it goes for magic powers. It's just, just like the old book said, don't focus on it. It's not the point of magic. Uh, even if it were possible, I wouldn't be interested because do I really want to spend, waste my life pursuing a party trick? Not really, right? Not really. We already have more power than we know what to do with. You, just by holding a phone, have more power and access to information than anybody else in human history, including the greatest emperors, monarchs, pharaohs, all of that. Like, you have more in your hand, in your pocket, than any other human being at any time in history. And not just the ability to consume information, but the ability to reach out and touch people, right? Um, not literally, don't do that. But, you know what I mean? <laughs> this is an old at and phrase from the 80s. It sounded weird then too. Okay. So I have no excuse for saying that it sounded we, okay. Look, it, you know what I mean, right? It's like, like creating in life. Anyways, moving on. So, uh, all right. What else can magic not do? Um, make all your wildest dreams come true. Okay. Like I, I often even get people writing it. I would assume this was straightforward, but I get people sometimes writing into me with like Santa Claus lists 
the things that they want Madge to do. And it's like, I want to be a billionaire. I want to, I want to, you know, be the most famous actor in the world. I want to, you know, write a best selling book. I want to, uh, you know, be, uh, the next Jeff Bezos. I want to go to the moon. Like all that is all on one list. And okay. Like a for enthusiasm, right? Can't fault you there. But the thing about magic is it's not a wish fulfilling genie. Okay. And even all the old fairy tales about wish fulfilling genies, which are really about magic will tell you this, right? It's not like you're not, it's not like an app that you're like ordering life experiences from, right? Uh, and so I, I guess people have this expectation of life now that everything will just be given to them. And, and unfortunately a lot of, um, sometimes a lot of kind of like more popular pop psychology or self-help will give you that impression that all you need to do is try harder and you're going to, you're going to get all your dreams are going to come true. And I'm not saying that's not true, right? What I am saying is there's limitations within this universe. And specifically when it's coming to this, it's the limitation of time and the limitation of what, what the human physiology is capable of. So time is the primary one. Okay. Because you can always team up with other people to do lots more, but a human life is limited. You know, and the Bible used to say you had 70 years. Now it's, now it's a little longer. It could be 80, 90 within a generation or two. It could be 120, 140. Right. So people are working on life extension. It seems to be going pretty well, actually. Whether that will be available to anyone except billionaires remains to be seen, but it is happening. Um, the question is what, you know, it's like, it just comes back to the same question that your guidance counselor asked you in high school. What are you going to do with your life? Because to really achieve anything, it requires single pointed focus over a long period of time, cutting a deep, deep, deep groove. There's a lot of keys to success. Um, but the biggest one is just time on task, right? And we all get this kind of idea of like my 10,000 hours. Okay. Like I actually hate that meme, the my 10,000 hours. It's like, you know, to really master something, you need to spend 10,000 hours. First of all, like it's the most arbitrary 10,000. Oh, okay. Like scientifically, like that's the most, it's like the most arbitrary number. Uh, also it, it denies, it just makes it a mechanical thing. It like denies genius. It denies insight. It denies strokes of luck. It denies divine provenance. Uh, which magic can very much interact with. So I, I don't like that idea at all. I think that guy should be given his 10,000 hours at Starbucks, but that's just me. I'm, you know, um, I, I, the, the most, the main reason why I don't like that is the same reason I don't like the whole like corporate mindfulness thing is because I think both of those ideas would just boil down to just like work harder at your job and be thankful. You know, it's like, it's corporate. Okay. Anyways, but to really, to, to really do anything in life requires, um, commitment and it requires commitment to the point of, uh, self-sacrifice. It requires not caring what the outcome is. It requires not caring what hardships will come from your decision. It means being willing to die rather than give up on pursuing your goal and being okay with the fact with, with being okay with it. If that happens. Cause there's no guarantee, right? It basically to do essentially what I'm saying is to do anything in life requires you to give all of yourself and more. Um, and, and that's something that very few people even consider it anymore. And our, our culture does not consider it, um, because we're, we're trained to have instant gratification more now, more than ever, just click a button on an app and it will be brought to you and just passively consume and let the machine do it for you. Um, but you know, as Muhammad said in the Quran, it's like faith can move mountains. I mean, like li literally, right. Um, human history has changed, not from, you know, I know there's a big movement in history to talk about, you know, post-structuralism and there's huge cultural sea changes and things like that and technological changes. And that's all true as well, but it very often has changed on the absolute one person's will and determination many, many, many times. And those are the people that we remember. And that that's real magic, right? But like I said earlier, you're using 100% of your capacity. That means using 100% of your life. And people are just not willing to even, it's not even they're not willing to do it or that they're not willing to consider it. They're not even told that it's an option, but it's tough luck, okay? Because it's never been different at any time in history, right? It takes a rare individual to do that. But magic, thankfully, is a set of techniques for doing exactly that. However, 
you can't like you got to narrow down your list, right? It can't be like you can't be a billionaire and you know we would all like to be Buckaroo Banzai from the movie in the eighties, one of my favorite movies. But like, it's really hard to multi class in life. Um, it, it's really hard to be like a multi billionaire actor, uh, you know, doctor, all this like all this stuff. It's like you you have to focus on what you truly want. And that is the whole question that magic asks in a way, the question of the true will. It's like, it's like the fight club thing of if you had a gun to your head, what would you do with your life? The reality is we all have guns to our heads, right? Sometime in the next, sometime between the next 10 seconds and the next, however many years we're going to die. Right. So, and it, it, as we get closer to that, we lose more and more of our physical and mental faculties. So human beings only have a certain number of productive years. It sucks. Nobody likes it, but it's just the way that it is. That's being human. Uh, and that's what all human beings are not happy about, but it is what it is. Um, so the question is, how are you, you know, how are you going to use that time and understanding that you can't constantly hop around between things? Like, what are you, that, that question requires sacrifice. Everyone has this idea, like, oh, does magic involve human sacrifice? Yeah, it does. It does. It requires the sacrifice of you. It requires a, the sacrifice of a lot of selves, a lot of people that you could have been. Because to fully commit commit to one goal, whether that's becoming a great politician or becoming a great writer or becoming uh, whatever it is, a great artist, you know, a great business person, wh whatever it is that you know is truly right for you, truly in your soul, you know, as in 4 a.m., nobody else is around, you're lying awake at night, you know, just tossing and turning. Um, who are you really? You know, truly committing to becoming that and giving your all to it will require you to let go of a lot of other people that you could have been, right? They all have to be sacrificed. And that doesn't mean hammer horseshit, obviously. Okay, don't get me wrong. It means, you know, it, it's something more, more painful in a way, which is, oh, I'm not going to be a rock star. I'm not going to be, you know, uh, whatever, you know, like I'm, I'm not going to be those other people that I could have been. The problem is that most people never make that decision because they don't want to because it's most painful, but it's too painful. They don't want to cut off people that they could have been. And so they don't become anyone, which is even more painful. So there's that last thing. There's that, a lot of stuff, but last thing for the purposes of this video that magic cannot do turn you into an all enlightened ascended being. You get this. I mean, you laugh, but you get this all the time with super new agey people. Okay. And they talk about that they're going to be. 12th dimension butthole crystal activated, you know, whatever. Um, they're going to be raptured up essentially by angels and everything's going to be lovely. And they're going to shoot, you know, they're going to shoot, uh, you know, light beams out of their, out of their, uh, orifices and so forth. Um, no. Okay. This is the most important one of all magic and spirituality in general will put you in touch with the spiritual. Okay. They'll put you in touch with, um, the more subtle, the deeper aspects of reality, the parts of reality engage with meaning and emotional resonance and what human beings might call truth. Okay. Um, and I don't say truth as in like a received dogma, but more in a sense of feeling that you were in line with the truth. Uh, experiment. Don't take my word for it. You need to prove that one on your own. I'm not telling you what's real or what's true. Okay. It's more of a feeling. Um, that aside, it spirituality makes you more spiritual. Okay. It does not make you different physically. It does not make you different emotionally. It can mature you, but it will not make your problems go away. Right. It will, it, what it does do particularly meditation, what it does you, does, what it does you, what it does do is allow you to take a more mature, hopefully approach to resolving your personality issues and problems in this world, which we all have. And when I say more mature, generally what that comes from, by the way, is not getting some kind of like, you know, again, light beams coming out of you, um, or some power that allows you to just make it go away. It generally means, um, facing it and not like just not running away from it anymore and not pretending that it's not there, just accepting it's there and that it sucks and that you have to do something about it. 
that generally tends to be what meditation does. That's how it matures people. And it does mature people very quickly, but it will not make your problems go away on its own. You can't meditate more or do more ritual to make your problems go away. Okay. You can ease your circumstances. You can use that stuff to bring a hundred percent of yourself to bear to change your situation. And you should for sure. Right. But what you don't want to get into is what some people have called recently spiritual bypassing, which is essentially just hiding out from your life by going on some, some trip into a fantasy world, which unfortunately a lot of people do, particularly in the new age community. I know I pick on new age people a lot. Sorry, but this point has to be made. I think that when it's done correctly, magic should be about direct, Peter Carroll put it very well, direct contact with reality. It should put you more in touch with the world as it is right here in front of you now. And the fact that this thing that we're in is, you know, more of a magical process than we could ever handle fully. Just if you focus on what's happening here and now, by the way, if you want a homework experiment, spend the rest of today just 100% focusing on what's, what's happening right now, whether you're washing the dishes, pumping the gas, just 100% focused on your own experience interesting experiment. I'll let you find your own results with that one. Um, but that's how I think magic should be done, in my opinion. Um, getting off into a, we, you may know people like this, you may have been somebody like this, um, you may be able to point people like this, getting off onto some spiritual trip um, uh, where you're running around in robes and you think you're a light worker fighting dark forces or a Vice versa, <laughs> you think you're the servant of Satan fighting life forces. Those people do exist. Um, whatever it is, um, it, you're in a narrative. You're in a fantasy world. You're disconnected. You're, you're, um, uh, uh, what's the word? Um, disassociated, right? You're disassociated from your body primarily. You're disassociated from your day to day existence. Uh, you're just checking out. You might as well get a PlayStation, right? And I recommend it. They're way more fun. So. Um, that, that's kind of what that is. So magic cannot solve, just solve your problems on its own. It can help solve your problems by putting, putting you directly in contact with reality and And the other thing that magic is really good at on the flip side of that is making you realize that a lot of what you think are your problems are just stories you're telling yourself. That's one of the best things magic can do. Meditation, magic. Because so many of our problems are actually our self. In fact, all of our problems to some extent are self generated. Or if they're not self generated, we make them worse with our own obsessive focusing or fantasizing or catastrophizing. And this is just good psychological wisdom. Uh, but meditation and magic can make that go away. That they definitely can do. And that is one of the most profound things that they do. They make that they, when you practice regularly, they lessen or banish that internal dialogue where we're obsessing on things and making them worse. And from that position, it becomes much, much easier to make new decisions and new decisions and do things to change your life because you get to suddenly you're freed up and you can move and make, you know, see new solutions and make new decisions and take new approaches that you couldn't even see before because you were like caught up in like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done or whatever it is. Anyways, so that's a brief guide to the things that magic cannot do for you. If you would like to know more about what magic can do for you, check out magic.me, M-A-G-I-C-K dot M-E. We have a free introductory course now. It's called Why Magic Start Here. We have a free introductory meditation, which is at start.magic.me. It's also in that free course. Uh, but magic.me, M-A-G, M-A-G-I-C-K dot M-E. We've got classes on every type of magic there. It's awesome. We've got new stuff coming out all the time. Uh, check out our podcast, podcast.magic.me. So it's magic.me, start.magic.me, podcast.magic.me. There's this YouTube, like and subscribe. There's tons of content there for you. I will see you next time.